The hair clipping materials have finally arrived and what better time to arrive than another episode of This Week. Our weekly show where we feature a recap of news, updates and slice of life from all of our friends across the world. In this episode, we welcome some new faces from Germany and Japan, while also saying hello to our friends in Shaman, Dubai, Riyadh, and Abu Dhabi. Ramadan Kareem to all of our Muslim friends, and to those who are watching, we hope that you are staying safe and keeping productive. In the meantime, how's life going on from your end? Let us know in the comment section down below, or send us a video from wherever you are across the world. I'm Paolo Gabriel Benitez, and you're watching another episode of This Week. And now that the hair clippers are here, I can finally get rid of all of this. everybody this week in Dubai. Now by the time you see this it'll already be Ramadan so Ramadan Karim to all. I'm filming this a little bit earlier so this is Passion Tall saying hello to present you. Now for those of you who want to add a little Italian flair to your iftar I'll be showing you what a typical Italian aperitivo is like. Now for those of you who don't know an aperitivo is an Italian version of a happy hour with much better food. Um, and usually in the summer, the sun sets around 9, 30, 10 p.m. So around five after work, friends, family, sometimes even co-workers gather and have their favorite drinks and some delicious Italian fares. Now on this table, we have a few typical examples of what you find at an aperitivo. Um, here is brezzaola, which is Italian air-dried beef served with parmigiano, which is the Italian word for Parmesan cheese. It's one of my favorite types of cold cut and you sprinkle a little bit of olive oil, sometimes a little bit of salt, and it is delicious. Now on this next plate, we have taleggio cheese, um, a little bit creamier than Parmesan, equally as delicious, but you usually spread on crackers and it is served here with dried prunes, grapes, and of course, grissini, which are Italian breadsticks made with olive oil, also one of my favorite things to eat. Um, you can also wrap the brizzata around the grissini for a little bit of a um, usually we'll have their favorite drinks. I love, love, love sparkling apple juice. Um, you can have also sparkling water, San Pellegrino, which is a typical Italian brand, as you all probably know. Um, and my favorite sparkling lemonade is Fever Tree Lemonade. It goes with almost anything and is spectacular by itself. Now, as I said earlier, I adore sparkling apple juice because I love the taste of apple juice and when it's sparkly and I can put it in a pretty glass, I feel all fancy. So I am gonna pour some for myself to have an aperitivo a la chantal. Cheers! This week in Meldorf, that is to say the northern German countryside, where I have retreated to spend the lockdown with my parents. Um, and I think I made the right choice because we have a garden here and I much prefer that to my small room in Vienna. Uh, it's currently 17 degrees over here, which uh, is quite good for this season. It's been a really nice couple of days. And I have to say, compared to um, a lot of other countries in Europe, the situation in Germany has been quite relaxed. Uh, but still, obviously, uh, there are some things that are very different. Uh, one is the boom in homemade masks. We've already received a couple. I think this one is my favorite so far florals for spring groundbreaking i hear and another one we can see over here um this is a so-called beast beach basket uh the german word is Handkopf, and these beach baskets uh can be found on a lot of northern german beaches because it uh, tends to be a little chilly over here even in summer and they nicely shield you from the wind um, so they just happen to be the perfect accessory for a staycation in northern Germany. And I think a lot of people have realized because there has been a massive boom in the beach basket industry. And essentially the producers just cannot keep up with demand anymore because everyone is preparing and settling 
in for a staycation summer and I have to say I'm very convinced uh, so I suggest you do the same prepare for, prepare for a really nice staycation if you're not already doing one anyway this is Hannah for this week in Middle Strato bye Hi, this is Moira and this week in Japan it's 17 degrees outside and it's getting warmer we're also approaching a long holiday it's called Golden Week um, I've been working at home for almost two months already because of the pandemic but what I do for work is I edit videos I support influencers with brands and I also do web designing um, we are currently not in lockdown, but we are under the state of emergency declaration and requested to stay at home as much as possible. We are also still having shortage on masks and hand sanitizers, but the number of infected people are getting lower. So I really hope people stay at home and respect social distancing when you're outside. Don't forget to wear your mask and wash your hands. Um, I also have my YouTube channel, so if you want to follow me, just search up Moira Inot Komatsu in YouTube and at Moira Moira for Instagram. This is Moira for this week's video in Illustrado. Hey everyone, this is Hilary and Oliver again for this week here in Riyadh City, Saudi Arabia. So as you can see, I'm wearing my PJs, my comfortable PJs, and uh, really I've been spending most of my days at home just to be really safe, guys. So with communities around the world being in total lockdown, a lot of people really are struggling, are confused on how to spend their time wisely. So there are this Netflix non-stop marathon as a solution. But guys, really there are plenty of productive way how to spend our time wisely. So yes, like what I did, I enrolled to this learning platform which is called Udemy, U-D-E-M-Y, Udemy.com. So they have a hundred of thousands of courses and for your information they are having around 24 million students now and most of the big companies are subscribing to this platform only because number one they are very professional number two the courses really are up to date and number three guys is the presentation really they are using videos it's just like you are in front of the instructor having an exclusive training and you can listen carefully you can volume it up uh, as loud as you want and they are using subtitles you can play you can post you can replay it again and also you can download some of the resources of the training or of the course and at the end of the training of course they will give you an app certificate so check this out guys i'm gonna share you the actual platform how it works so you will have an idea and i really encourage everybody to enroll to improve ourselves to use this quarantine time you know to scale up and to be you know at the end of this uh, pandemic we will be going out with a lot of knowledge and uh, uh, and, and much better. <laughs> Udemy offers courses on nearly any topic you can think of from learning any language to creating 2D art elements in Adobe Illustrator or for mobile development and for the reason for this is because Udemy allows anyone to become a teacher. However, you have to meet qualifying criteria before you are allowed to release a content. The format is consists of text, videos, watch and quizzes taken. Now a video could be a slideshow with voiceovers, screen casting, lectures or videos specifically made just for the course and depending on the instructor exercise files can be provided so each course is purchased on its own and has no subscription fee prices can range from free to $299 plus but there's usually some discount code out there floating around that can make them drop as low as $10 with few exemptions the quality just like everything else can vary greatly Udemy has put up a rating system to help consumers find quality content with my experience I have taken a lot of courses that have really impacted my career such as Vanessa Van Edwards body language course and Jason Tech's presentation skills course and with Udemy the most important thing is is that you get to keep the course forever you might find yourself having to come back after you've completed it because you forgot something and this isn't typically how most online learning websites work you usually get an annual subscription or monthly subscription and once that's gone you don't have an access
So guys, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something again this week. This is again Hilarion Oliver in this week here in Illustrato. Thank you and God bless. This week in Dubai, it's 26, I wish. I wish it was 20 something. This week in Dubai, it's 32 degrees and congrats everybody who lives here because we don't need permits to go out anymore. But don't get too cocky, okay? We still gotta wear a mask, we still gotta wear gloves. I've heard that the second wave of a pandemic can be worse than the first, so be cautious out there, all right? And actually, I had my first encounter with the future when I went grocery shopping at the mall the other day. And at the entrance of the mall, there was a thermal camera, and at the entrance of the supermarket, there was a laser thermometer. So they're being very cautious too, as you should be. So I applaud them. And the other thing that's, that's happened was that today was my last day at my part-time job that I've been working um, for like four years, four years of two months. Um, it's been kind of bittersweet, but I'm kind of looking to the future. I was going to move to Canada on March 6th, but that flight got canceled, we all know why. But I'm not gonna let this thing get in the way because I'm gonna make it there by the end of the summer and I'm gonna get what I want to get done and I'm not gonna let this thing get in the way of what, do I, want, what I wanna do, okay? You shouldn't let it get in the way of you too, okay? So this has been Donna for This Week in Illustrato. Hi, this is Jacob Merlid from the graduating class of American Community School of Abu Dhabi at This Week at Illustrato. Hello everyone, I'm in Saudi Island uh, at my home in Abu Dhabi, just chilling for now. I'll talk to you about the, the end of my high school life and the overall online classes that we had due to the pandemic we're having in this world and the graduation I'm going to have for my high school life as well. First, I want to talk about the online classes that we're having. It's, it's very good, honestly. I think I think they did a great job. My school did a great job in like getting everything prepared and all the teachers ready for what's gonna happen next in our online classes. Secondly, I want to talk about the graduation. And at first, I was fairly disappointed that we're not gonna graduate at Emirates Palace. However, we have now a virtual graduation where we film ourselves throwing the cap and hugging our parents and getting the diploma as a whole and. Overall, it just feels surreal and I'm very excited about that virtual graduation. Throwing the cap uh, brought me a lot of joy and just to reflect and reminisce about all the memories I had in my high school life. And I do feel for other people that are going through the same thing. That it is tough, it is tough to experience this virtual graduation because it's not very common in um, high school high school lives. And I think I think it's a different, different kind of experience and that uh, we will remember this for the rest of our lives even when we have kids. This is Jacob Merlid from the graduating class of 2020 in American Community School at This Week at Illustrato. Hi, I'm Leslie, and this week I'm going to show you how I did my pink makeup from last week's episode. The e-girl look, as seen on several J-pop and K-pop groups, is someone who spends a hefty amount of time immersed in the internet, social media, and gaming world. This is actually my favorite recently, and I like how subtle and fresh it makes me look. I use lip tints for my eyeshadow, blush, and lipstick. It actually lasts longer than shades in powder form. Don't forget the highlights! Ta-da! We're done! Try it! It's easy and fast to do. Have fun, don't forget to wash your hands, stay safe, and see you all next week! Hello, Sing! 
Thai from Toronto. Um, it's month two of the lockdown. Although they wanna, they don't wanna call it that. So we're still at home. Um, whenever we can, we go to the backyard to get some sun. We take our kids out. But I just wanna show you how our neighborhood looks like um, here in Toronto. Oh, oh, no during the lockdown. Um, there's a, behind us is a, like a, a daycare where they normally keep kids. Um, on normal days you'll see cars there but right now it's empty because I don't think they, they keep kids there right now. So yeah, I'll show you around. The street is really empty. You want to see our neighbors in there. Really quiet. So this is how it looks like when I'm from in Mort York in Toronto. People are indoors. We're stuck indoors. We go up, but we can't go beyond the yard. Is that? We take the kids out to the backyard so they can get some sun and fresh air. There's the park right over there, and that's the it's, it's a daycare. Normally, you'll see lots of cars park um, over there, but now it's empty. There's, there's a like a park right over there. You'll see a few big people taking their kids out for a short walk. But we can't stay in the parks because it's not allowed. They've, they've closed all public parks and some people have been slapped with hefty fines for going to the park. So there you have it. Um... That's our life in isolation here in Toronto. We go out once a week to get groceries, but that's it. We mainly just stay inside. Both of us, my husband and I, we work from home. And the kids say they study, they do distance learning. So the teachers, they send um, materials and stuff to read. So this is our life right now. It, it looks like we're not gonna come out of this lockdown anytime soon. Um, probably last till June. I'm not sure. So, say bye, guys. See you next week. <laughs> bye. Hi, guys. Clara here for the Strada team. Uh, today we are gonna go for something very, very, very cool. A friend of mine she has invited me to join a group that they play Chinese drums. All right. So, I am in a new area. I have never been to this area before. It's quite a uh, traditional as well as you can see my friend is over there Patricia she's from Switzerland we are quite lost because we don't know where to go uh, however however she practiced this uh, Chinese drum so once we get into the location I will show you a little bit because I'm new as well but it, this is something very traditional here in this country so I'm very excited so guys we have arrived to our location so this is the classes that I'm gonna take of course, I'm very, very, very newbie. This is a, the school. It's in a very remote area, um, as you can see here in, uh, in Xiamen. So um, let's see. Let's see how this goes. And uh, let's go back in. So this is, these are the drums. So now each of us, we are taking our own drums. Let's practice. One is for the right. Two is on the left. So one, two, one, two, one, two, one. That will be the simple uh, musical notes. Okay, the simple melody. One, two, one, two. So we are having our okay. work. One, two, three, four. One, one, two, one, two, one, two. Again, one, two, three, four. One, one, two, one, two, one, two. So, so we just finished the class.
We are very s a very sm small group. So see you next week. Bye bye, guys. Your difficulty is your catalyst, and your setback is your starting point for success. Remember that some of the best success stories of our time comes from those who are at their lowest point, because they are so driven to release their pain to form a mindful solution. They cause a shift within, and they move and move and move until they come out. While those who are not facing any crisis, they're not so inspired to make any changes. The psychologist says, if it's broken, don't fix it. In parallel, when things are messy, when we're hurting, when we're experiencing turmoil, it's an opportunity for us to evolve. It's a potential for us to expand our established ideals to create a new solution. If it's your relationship that's on the edge of collapse, see it as a chance to love deeper than you've ever loved. Before and to start thinking, where am I not coming from? A space of love, understanding, compassion, kindness, or even forgiveness. Well, how can I enhance my connections while I live? And if it's your work and you're feeling unmotivated, take it as a chance to be present with your best self, or walk away and change your path. Ask yourself, how can I create more value for the world? So you see, sometimes it takes losing almost everything in order to see. From a new and fresh perspective, and always trust that your difficulty is leading you into a totally different life, pushing you into becoming a greater version of yourself. Only if you say yes and go for it. So don't ask to change your circumstances because your present circumstance is asking to change you. Your heartbreak or adversity is what it takes for you to be present as the person who can embrace the reality that you say you want. So remember, keep going. Your difficulty is your catalyst, and it is defining the most extraordinary life that you could have envisioned. Love you all so much, and thank you for taking this journey with us from the beautiful, beautiful home of Leslie. If you guys are new to our video, go ahead and give us a thumbs up, tag a friend if you love this message, and share it if it moves you, because we all need positive messages of love, light, and joy. See you guys next week. Hey guys, this week at home, I'm actually gonna be flexing my domestic skills. I'm gonna be making some tomato and orange jam. You know, in times like these, where you can't really go out, you need to be stocked up on all your essentials in the kitchen. You need to have your bread. You need to have your eggs. You need to have your tomato marmalade, right? And Vienna sausages, of course. So this tomato and orange and lemon jam is the perfect snack. It's super easy to prepare, and you can whip it out anytime, especially for merienda. We're using the tomatoes in our garden. And uh, let's actually go pick them now. When you think of jam, tomato is probably not the first thing that comes to mind, but this recipe should really be a staple in your home. The flavor is super balanced. It's sweet yet tart, and it's perfect on top of toast. There I am in the kitchen. For this recipe, I used one orange, half a lemon, and a bowl full of micro cherry tomatoes. For slicing up the orange, I just quartered them and sliced these quarters up real thin. I did the same with half a lemon. I struggled a bit there. The knife was a bit blunt. The lemon in this recipe actually serves two purposes, one for flavor and texture, and the other for preserving the jam. Lemon juice has natural antimicrobial properties, so it really helps keep the jam lasting longer. And for the cherry tomatoes, I just pick the stems and wash them after. Now I'm just throwing them into a pot over medium heat and stir them for a bit. And eventually, after that, I added a cup of sugar. You want to bring this mixture to just about a boil, but when it hits a boil, immediately lower the heat and simmer it for about 45 minutes.
Et voila, tomato jam. So that was my week, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you tried doing this yourself at home, please feel free to contact me and send a pic. And you can reach me via my Instagram at antonino.benitas. But for now, guys, see you next time. And this has been This Week in Illustrado.